Does your vision for business match what you see happening on a daily basis? Welcome to Jim White's Circle of Success Show, where Jim White brings it all together. For over 30 years, Jim White has worked with organizations and individuals worldwide to help develop and implement excellence. You'll get the inside story on how to create innovative leaders from one corner of your company to the other. Get everyone on your team contributing to the bottom line. Keep building revenue, even when the economy and your customers have flatlined, and more. Jim White's Circle of Success show covers it all, from communication to contract negotiation, from personal fulfillment to revving up cash flow. It's not about theories, it's about showing what works and how to make it work for you. And now, here's your host, Jim White. Thank you, David, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. This is uh, Monday, April the 9th, and uh, in the United States and around the world, we just celebrated uh, Easter, and uh, as I was preparing for the show, um, I said, you know, what can we do differently uh, today? Uh, in keeping with the mission of the show of inspire and educate, what can we do different to give you a, some uh, different information? And what I decided to do was to lead off with the first two segments with a what I believe to be a very compelling video. And it's uh, entitled the video is, We Still Hold These Truths. We still hold these truths. It's a video that's uh, produced by the Heritage Foundation, and I want to thank them for uh, our being able to use it. And as you know, uh, you know, I take content uh, that I believe that's rich and that is in supportive of our values uh, at the show, uh, uh, Circle Success Show, uh, KYMB. And uh, to be able to uh, just just to reinforce opportunities, and to be able to what I call connecting the heart in the head. And once we look at this uh, video, uh, 19 minutes, we're going to come back and we're going to uh, talk about uh, some of the vital points uh, that my, from my view, and then we're going to talk about. Uh, some different companies uh, that are struggling, and we're going to talk about why some companies succeed and why other companies do not. We're also going to talk about um, uh, leadership. Uh, you know, that's a favorite theme of mine, if you will. We did a whole show on it last week. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the current uh, unemployment numbers and, and, and briefly talk about uh, some of the uh, other landmines en route to the White House. So sit back, uh, enjoy, uh, get a note, uh, notepad and pen, and let's watch this clip, and we'll be right back after this clip. You're watching KYMB Comcast Channel 19. I have seen so much. They say I'm a survivor of, of World War II, and it is now or never. It is up to your generation to become the army of liberation. If enough people wake up, we can make a conscious decision to go back to founding principles. We 
have to conserve and preserve this country because we have too much to lose. In 1776, when America announced itself to the world, it was virtually nothing, 13 small colonies. Now, over 200 years later, it is almost everything. It is the strongest, most powerful and prosperous nation in the world. Why is that? It's because America is unique. It, unlike any other nation, is grounded in principles and in ideas. But today, these ideas are under question, perhaps as never before in our lifetimes. That's not new because America is an experiment. Always has been, it always will be. But how we answer those questions today will determine our future, the future of our country, and us as a people, and how we and our cause of liberty will endure. encroachment, this growing movement that's taking away freedom and trying to replace it with um, government regulated responsibility. Up to this point our forefathers, our grandfathers, our fathers handed us a better country than it was before in prosperity and uh, ability to be free and prosperous and uh, now we're looking at a, a turnaround in a crossroads if you will and, and that's the passion that drives a lot of us try to get that prosperity back. It's not the role of the U.S. federal government, or the state government for that matter, to dictate how private contracts between me and a buyer, or me and a seller work. And when they start messing with that free market system, they change the dynamics and guys like me can't predict the outcome because they're not playing by the rules. The rules constantly change. That's frustrating. America is a truly amazing country. It began as a tax revolt because the British were taking our property. We oftentimes think of property as a piece of land, a, a possession, but it's much more dynamic than that. It's a first principle of liberty. It stems from our right to the fruits of our labor. It used to be that the few controlled all the property and our labor, leaving the rest of us out of the picture. But when property becomes a right, it opens the door for unlimited opportunity for everyone. The uh, real estate downturn of 08, 09, and even 2010 wasn't a result of guys like me damaging the free market system. But my success creates employment opportunities for people. My success creates tax revenue. My success is not taking away someone else's success. I personally want to have a good future. I don't want to be under the government's thumb for uh, the rest of my career or even have no career because the government's decided that that the oil business needs to be obsolete or any other business for that matter so I just want to be able to um, have a prosperous future and I won't be able to do that if if the government takes over everything they want to take over the right of private property unleashes innovation and enterprise an engine of growth and prosperity for our nation but it also connects the rewards of the marketplace to great human creativity, creating a great practical means for all of us to pursue and achieve our happiness. It seems that many, many uh, black Americans feel disenfranchised or, you know, they feel that because of the un injustices of the past, uh, you know, in America, that they are not a part of the mainstream America. And I guess to an extent, I can understand that, but I feel that things have changed and we have become 
so much better in race relations and I feel that opportunities exist and it's no longer uh, possible to keep uh, black Americans from achieving. Many of us Americans take that for granted that having opportunity and choice and freedom to do whatever it is that we have talent or an inclination to do is an incredible unbelievable gift and a blessing and it's not something that we come by luck it is is something that we've achieved as a country because of our principles I have lived under socialist systems before there was the national socialist that was Hitler's there was the international socialist that was Stalin's and I know what it happens to nations when they're socialists and you know what happened to them they're gone in many ways religious liberty is the most important achievement of the American founding what freedom is more fundamental Today, religion is often seen as being divisive, something to be separated from our politics. But throughout our history, from the very beginning, faith and freedom were deeply intertwined. Liberty strengthened faith, allowing it to freely express its beliefs and pursue its divine mission. But faith was necessary for liberty. Not only does it shape moral character, but it builds the moral fiber necessary for us to be free. Religious liberty, but more broadly, those institutions of civil society which shape us, our families, our faith, our communities, are the engine of self-government. And as a result, form the primary and culminating principle of liberty. I thank God that we live in a country where I had the freedom to pull the girls out and educate them the way we thought best to do. Our right to freedom of um, expressing our religion, not just the, the freedom to hold personal beliefs, but my freedom to express my re religious beliefs in public, um, are all things I think I and many people just took for granted until we start, started to see them um, slipping away. Ordinary Americans need to go back and reflect on those founding principles, understand how those principles have made their lives what they are compared to other people living all over the world today, and to understand that the principles are important and worth fighting for. It's amazing how many of the founders have quotes related to, um, we have to conduct ourselves as American citizens in a moral way to continue to enjoy the blessings of God. And, and much of our founding principles is based in that philosophy. Freedom, if you never had it, you don't even know it exists. And Americans living in freedom have absolutely no idea that they have it. They have no idea. They do not understand that they got something of such value. So why if they don't have, why should they protect it? Why should they be worried about it? Not until they lose it. And they're gonna lose it not because somebody's gonna come in with the bayonet and stick it in them. They're gonna lose it. There's a Hungarian expression. They're gonna lose it by salami tactics. And you slice it, slice by slice by slice. The rule of law is one of those ideas we don't think about that much. Never clearly stated, yet it is explicit throughout our whole Constitution. It's the bedrock of liberty, the cornerstone of limited government. 
throughout most of history and in many parts of the world today, rule was determined by force or fraud, perhaps by dictators or tyrants. But in the West, through England and into America, there was a different idea. Rule was determined by law. Our rulers were subject to that law. And there's a process to which we were all due equally before the law. It is the rule of law expressing the consent of the governed that leads us not only to defend our sovereign independence, but also to uphold the principles of liberty throughout the world. The rule of law and the Constitution have given us many benefits over our history, what the Constitution calls the blessings of liberty. We enjoy those blessings, as do so many who still come to this country. My name is Andres Gonzalez. I go by Andy. I, I was born in Colombia. Uh, I worked for Congressman Lincoln Diaz Bullard, and I handle his uh, public relations, so press secretary, uh, media appearances, etc. What makes America unique it would be the combination of diversity and the respect of rule of law. My dad always wanted to move to the States because he thought that there we could have more uh, opportunities. We, the Americans by choice, are the ones who have tears come to our eyes when the flag is flag when we when we watch the flag. We are the ones because we know what it's all about. And it's still the same. I saw that flag ceremony yesterday and I had tears come to my eyes. It never changes. There is an important distinction inherent in the American idea. We, the people, are sovereign. We have rights. Government does not have any rights. It secures our rights. It only has the powers we have given it in our Constitution. The idea of limited constitutional government is a key principle of liberty. The more we turn over our lives to government, the more we turn over our lives to bureaucrats and become dependent the less we are self-governing and the less we are free. People have to rule themselves. We the people are the government of this country and we need to get our country back to the people and that just creates this passion and stirs the, uh, our interest to keep this movement going. The government has only stifled quality, if anything. So the idea that government is going to somehow provide some higher level of care at a lower cost is insane, really. It's not, I don't know where that notion comes from. People can still hold the government accountable. Uh, it's perhaps the greatest treasure that the U.S. has to offer the world. Many people are looking for something different, but I say this is the greatest country in the world and we have to be very, very careful when we start trying to change the, the principles that the Founding Fathers met. We have an old oak tree. You've seen the oak tree. That oak tree must be as old as the Republic, if not older. We tried to determine the age we coming up around 250 years or something like that. But that oak tree was knocked down by a hurricane, a big hurricane. It must have been big because the oak tree was about four or five feet in, uh, uh, in diameter and be knocked down. But that oak tree refused to die. 
with the remaining roots that it had. It continued to live, develop new roots, and has become a magnificent new structure, and that is my hope for America. In one of his greatest speeches, Abraham Lincoln said that this country would never be defeated by a foreign power. As freemen, we would live through all time or we would die by suicide. We've now come to a crossroads. Either we will go the path we are currently on, which takes us to becoming merely another nation like those of Europe, bureaucratic and centralized, secular, weak, unsure of its own purpose. Or we could choose the path which we've gone on before, and we may go on again, which to go back to our principles. Those principles are not lost. They're seen everywhere around us, in the stories we've heard, in our day-to-day -day lives, in our families, in our communities. What self-government is about is to go back to those principles and live them as a nation. The only way you protect American principles is for the citizens, the, the everyman, to become a student of our history, to become a statesman. And you can only be inspired by the success who we are has, has made us. We are fighting the establishment, and we are the establishment. If we don't recognize what we have and why it's important, we will lose it, as civilizations throughout human history have proven. It's something special, something different from, you know, wherever you come from, and it's worth it. We have a responsibility to conserve and preserve this wonderful republic called America. Everybody needs to be proud American and make this country strong. If we get this country strong, the world will thrive after that. Are we the same people um, as our founding fathers in the sense of do we believe those principles are relevant today? Or do we believe that the world has changed in such a way that the founding principles are no longer relevant and we need to move to something different? The reason these freedoms are still relevant today is they're actually based on truth. Every generation must vindicate the cause of liberty. Who are we? What do we believe? We must rediscover these truths so that we can reclaim our future. That is our task now. This segment is brought to you by 12 O'Clock High Leadership and Management Summit. 12 O'Clock High is one of the undisputed best movie classics of all time. It is also one of the best business learning tools available. The movie rated number one by top executives for its influence on their management styles. Now, the inspiration of the 12 O'Clock High Leadership and Management Summit an innovative one-day event and 30-day follow-up where you will quickly see what's working and not working on the front lines of your company and in your own leadership style. Learn more at 12high.com. That's 12high.com. Thank you, David. We're back. That clip, in, in my view, very powerful and I hope you agree. And the reason I wanted to show that on today's show was to uh, take a moment and step back and reflect in the beauty and the freedoms that we are so lucky to enjoy in the United States. On past shows, you've heard me talk about uh, educating yourself, You've heard me talk about 
uh, getting in the game. And what I mean by that is to uh, realize that our elected leaders work for us. And as we proceed uh, down to the selection of a Republican candidate uh, that's going to uh, meet in a general election, uh, opposition of President Obama and uh, leading up to the election in November of 2012, I think we as Americans need to uh, reflect on our uh, founding principles. I think we need to uh, uh, really uh, understand uh, government, and, and as stated in the clip, the limited role of government, and the rules of law, and to understand that uh, uh, government uh, secures our rights as it was beautifully portrayed in the uh, clip that we viewed. It is also important to uh, know that uh, our liberties, even though they have been challenged, uh, especially since 9-11, uh, are something that we, we, we do not need to uh, give away. Uh, in my opinion, uh, we have really gone to an extreme uh, for securities and because we're working uh, other people's agenda. And, and please do not misunderstand my words. Uh, I believe in a secure nation for all the citizens. However, we've got to make sure that uh, we're not playing into um, the fear mongering, if you will. So I just thought it was an, an important to... Uh, uh, take today's show and we're coming off a great celebration of the uh, uh, celebration of Easter uh, and also uh, to understand that uh, one of the other beautiful uh, things about America is the freedoms uh, to worship in any ways that you choose uh, and, and, and that is a gift that, that is precious uh, and also to uh, understand that faith uh, is a uh, is a big big issue. Now, having said that, and I just want you to uh, to reflect uh, on uh, the unemployed. I, I pause there for a moment because I was on the Saturday's uh, radio show, Circle Success radio show. Uh, I drilled down on uh, March uh, labor uh, results, and we came up short. Uh, about 120,000. Uh, we were projecting about 200,000 uh, to enter the labor force in March. Uh, we did not. So we're still on a very slippery slope um, in, in, in America, as far as our economy is concerned. And as we um, move forward, as we start getting into the what I call the heat of the battle of the general election, uh, it's going to be nasty. Uh, it's going to uh, be finger-pointing, uh, not much accountability. Uh, in my opinion, uh, and like I said, these are my views, <laughs> right? Jim White's views. And, and, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, how, how it all comes out. But at the end of the day, it's about you uh, making a difference, uh, you really appreciating uh, the freedoms that we do have and the opportunities that we do possess in the United States. Now, what I'm going to do uh, in the other segments, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about these opportunities and talk about uh, there's not a better way to create opportunities than to create jobs. Uh, when we have uh, people that's unemployed, uh, unemployed uh, it, it not only drains on our economic system, but it also drains on our moral fiber. If you are unemployed and you're, you're out there, you're, you're, you're pounding the pavement, you're putting out hundreds of resumes, 
and all you're getting is a no and a no and no. And, uh, and, and some of the research that we were doing this morning just for the show, you know, I, where is it? Uh, I put out some legislation that, uh, that's currently in play where uh, we're finding that a lot of companies are, uh, if you've been unemployed for some period of time, your chances of becoming employed are less because you have been unemployed. That's, a, that's another slippery slope there. So what I want to, yeah, everybody to understand, you can make a difference from your home today. There's plenty of opportunities to create your own destiny. If you cannot get a job, uh, create one. That's the beauty of, of the American system. Create it. Do not sit there and, uh, and, and continue to be a victim. So I want you to create it. Now, as you know, on, on, on past shows, we have, we have also talked about um, uh, job creation in the way of the Jobs Act or the crowd, uh, crowdfunding. And as you're probably aware, uh, President Obama did sign uh, the Crowdfunding Act on the 5th of, of, of April. Then the next thing is going to occur is uh, for the uh, SEC to start implementing. So I hope that we stay after this initiative. Do not allow it to get bogged down in the bureaucracy again. I know there's going to be a lot of uh, legal and, and a lot of uh, attempts to say we need to regulate. Well, I think the industry is going to do a great job at self-regulation. Uh, and we already have a lot of laws in place right now. We don't need to create other laws in order to buy time. So what I'm saying for the people that's, uh, that's viewing the show today and from around the world, there's opportunities, uh, and, and, and especially in the U.S., with the new rules that are going to apply so you can use the Internet Get it in the 21st century how you can go raise equity for your, for your enterprise. So this is exciting. Uh, so uh, go to our website, jowcos.tv, and we have a lot of resources there for you uh, to be able to start investing. So if you got an idea, um, come forth. Uh, Google some of these sites. One of the sites that we're working with right now is growvc.com. Uh, there's others, Kickstarters, there's many other sites out there that, that you can look at if you're set, you know, like I said, once again, I've said there's three or four different <laughs> ways today. If you're setting at home and you're unemployed and you're trying to figure out some way in order to put food on the table, man, there's a lot of stuff right in front of you, okay? So I want you to uh, think about that and take action. And we're going to get another break in here, but we come back, there's a, in, in the remaining segments today, uh, I am going to drill down on uh, 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 two or three different companies, just give you some flavor of why companies, some companies succeed and other companies do not succeed. So we've got to get this break in. You're watching KYMB, Comcast Channel 19. We'll be right back after this. Are you looking for a clarity of purpose? Are you a recent college graduate, unemployed, an entrepreneur, or considering a career change? A business owner or employee struggling with performance issues? Classes are forming now for the worldwide phenomenon, What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0. What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0 can help you define your goals and vision. Start living your life on purpose. Living on purpose is about joy. Living on purpose is about intention. Living on purpose is about personal transformation and continued growth. What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0 is a 12-week challenging course that helps you address finances, relationships, spiritual growth, physical and mental health. You will reclaim your personal power and get your life on track to attain true success. Classes are forming now for What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0. Learn more and register at whatsmypurpose.com. That's whatsmypurpose.com. Thank you, David, and we're back. Um, we're starting another class on May the 21st of, of 2012, 12-week uh, uh, series, or 90 minutes uh, every Monday at 5 uh, Pacific. And we have uh, uh, some very exciting uh, opportunities uh, for the folks that are uh, unemployed 
and for the veteran community. If you uh, 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 believe uh, and, and you're still struggling and believe that you want to reach out and do some work to, uh, to be able to kind of do the process of making sure that you are uh, seeking this work that's your purpose, uh, we have some opportunities for you. And if you'd like to learn more about some scholarship opportunities, um, send us an email through the uh, website, jowcos.tv. Tell us why uh, you should qualify for a free 12-week course. Yes, free 12-week course, uh, which is underwritten by a third party. So these are opportunities. Uh, and uh, as, as I was looking at some of the uh, unemployment numbers, um, over 5 million people over the age 50, 60 that's really struggling, uh, we can help you down, down that path, if you will. So uh, if you'd like to apply, send us an email. Uh, give us a compelling story as to why uh, you should qualify for one of these spots, okay? So I'd encourage you to do that. Now, what I want to do at this time is to talk about uh, three uh, tech giants. And this is just a way of examples of, of, of showing you uh, uh, what works and what doesn't work and why some companies are successful and why other companies aren't. Well, I'm talking about uh, HP, and I'm talking about Yahoo, and I'm talking about uh, RIM, uh, which is the uh, producer of the BlackBerry, okay? Now, all three of these tech giants uh, are, are, are struggling. And if what's interesting when you look at their competitors, and the question is, once again, why are some people so successful and other organizations aren't? Well, I am going to uh, throw up a slide here momentarily, and we're going to walk through this slide, and, and it's called the 10 stages of a corporate life cycle. Okay? Now, most business people uh, not even aware that uh, there is such a thing, right? So I want you, I want to walk you through these ten stages, and I'm going to connect the, got, the dots at where these three companies, HP, Realm, and Yahoo, is. And at the same time, I want you, uh, the viewer, to say, "Hmm, where am I on this uh, on this circle, if you will?" So let's take a look at it. Uh, Dave, if you could throw up this uh, uh, PowerPoint. Well, here we go. It's on the screen. Now, what I want to do is to uh, let's go with stage number one. Well, this stage, as you can see, is the initial development or the creation, uh, the proposition of the model or the idea, commonly referred to as the startup. Uh, the entrepreneurial stage, the idea. So everyone starts there. It's just like giving birth to an individual. You're giving birth. So this is where you're giving birth to an idea or to a, uh, to a, a, a new organization, okay? And then as that birth is, uh, comes forth, uh, uh, you're, you're launching. Uh, it's called you're, 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 in, you're an infant, if you will as a corporate infant, uh, and you are launching, and you are you start trading, and you start uh, uh, producing products and services uh, for revenue, uh, and then you keep moving, and you move into this uh, uh, third stage, which is this, uh, what we call the go-go stage. Uh, and, and that's where you're frantic and you're energetic, and you can see it on the slide, energetic. And it's an early growth and sometimes chaos, okay? You're sometimes in chaos. It's just like going through our adolescent years, if you will, 13, 14 in, in that area. And then if you continue to grow and, and you're finding your, uh, your place and you're generating revenue, uh, you're generating uh, jobs, you're generating a supply chain, uh, you move into this, what we call the adolescent stage, uh, stage number four of a corporate life cycle. Now, in that stage, 
you are still developing, but more established and defined. So you begin to have a brand there, if you will. Uh, you, 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 you will have a brand uh, where you can uh, uh, really understand uh, where, you, where you are and where you're going. Then as you move into stage number five, this is what we call the prime, uh, the, the, the prime stage, okay? Now, this prime stage, that's where a business or an organization is its fittest and you're at your healthiest and your most competitive and, and you're popular and, and you have cash flow and you have profitability and you're creating earnings and all of those things. So that's where you are in this prime stage. And then you see that you kind of get what I call trouble clock, uh, the trouble clock high uh, area there. Uh, between five and six, and then you got that stability stage, okay? Uh, that stability stage uh, is uh, you're still effective, uh, you're popular, uh, can still be very profitable in, in that stage as well, but you're beginning to lose um, uh, a leading edge and a vulnerability and, and is creeping in on that stage. Now, herein lies the challenge as the challenge that we have with the United States is that balance, always keeping at your fittest and always being able to be on your game. Well, that requires what? You've heard it many times from me on, on the show. That, re that requires leadership, right? That requires a ton of leadership. Now, uh, just a sidebar here before I uh, drill down on that. Prior to going live on the air, I was talking to uh, Dave Johnson and we we were talking about um, um, uh, leaders, and and I was making reference that in the Fortune 500 uh, uh, area of the day, a typical leader is about a year, uh, and 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 the corporate CEO is about four to five years. Well, the significance of that is this: when you have a leader. Uh, and, and that's about 44% of the last numbers we have of the industry uh, falls in this category where you have uh, leaders that are there for about a year and let's say that each leader has approximately 12 direct reports, if you will. Uh, well, if you got this turnover, you got this constant uh, flux of uncertainty uh, over and over and over. So uh, this, this is a big deal. So if you, that's affecting 44% of your employee base. So no wonder you have challenges to be able to stay what, where I want you to be between this prime, number five, and, and stability. That's our goal. That's where we want to be at all times. But unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. There are certain things that kick in. We have the, uh, the economy. Uh, I mean, all sorts of things that are there to derail you. But, you know, the real test of a real leader is longevity, is your ability to be able to lead in good times as well as bad times. You've heard this from me over and over and over uh, in person, uh, in my speaking engagements, my workshops, consulting, coaching, and, and on radio and on television. It's your ability to, to, to show that you have the vision and, and what I call taking the invisible and making it visible, uh, being out uh, doing things and developing strategies that other people cannot see and being able to implement those, those strategies. So uh, this 10 stages of life cycle is ex extremely, extremely in important. Now, what I want to do is to go uh, to stage number seven, if we can go back to the PowerPoint, Dave, stage number seven is you're strong by the virtue of the market presence and consolidated accumulated success. You've been there, been at it for a while. Now, uh, may give an example of that. Maybe that's say that's Microsoft, if you will. Okay, uh, but slow and somewhat unexciting. Uh, definitely losing market share. Um, and I know I'll probably get some emails from Microsoft for me using them in this, but uh, it was the first thing that came to mind. Um, to competitors and new technologies and trends. 
So this number seven is a big deal uh, because that's when you've got constant innovation. That's where you've got to be uh, constantly uh, innovating and, and communicating uh, different visions, right? Now, number eight uh, is doubts, uh, problems, uh, threats, and internal issues overshadow the original purpose. Now, I tell you, highlight that one, uh, and we will have this slide available from the website for you to download after the show if you'd like to do so. But highlight that because these three companies that I made reference to, HP, RIM, BlackBerry, and Yahoo, uh, that's where they fall. They fall in that category uh, right at the moment. They're on that slippery slope trying to grab a hold, trying to get traction again. Well, some of the challenges that we have uh, with this is just take HP. Well, we have a new CEO, uh, Meg Whitman. Uh, I don't, uh, Meg Whitman is not new to this game. I've followed her career since she started when eBay was started. Uh, she has a very successful track record. However, some of the issues that uh, Meg has is we're trying to solve the same problems with the same people that created the problem. Uh, you, you, it's, that's not going to be successful. Uh, so different strategies and uh, so so and it's and it's complex. That goes to uh, uh, the theory from I think you've heard me talk about the box sand pile uh, with my friend uh, Ted Lewis talking about the complexity theory, and, and that's really where this falls in, is to uh, uh, realize that uh, they've become too complex, if you will. So that's a, uh, that's a, a whole uh, theory that I, I think falls right into this category as well. Now, uh, I want to play a, a small uh, piece of a clip uh, from the new CEO just appointed in January of 2012 for RIM. And I did, we're, it's, it's uh, seven or eight minutes. We're only going to play a couple of minutes of it. And uh, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about that clip. And then I'm going to come back and revisit uh, uh, the balance of the 10 stages. So let's take a look at this clip we can now, Dave. I'm absolutely excited, right? I mean, this is... This is so fantastic and phenomenal to, to become the CEO, being trusted by Jim, Mike and the board to, to follow Mike's and Jim's big footsteps. I joined this company four years ago and uh, it was uh, growing, but comparably it was still small in, in the wireless uh, arena, right, as a player. We have taken this to total new, new heights and that journey isn't over yet, right? Uh, if we continue doing well what we're doing, um, I see no problems of us being in the top three players worldwide in the next years in wireless. At the very core of RIM, at its DNA, how I always describe it, is the innovation. I mean, we always think ahead. We always think forward. We sometimes think the unthinkable. Um, and that is fantastic. This is the core of any high technology company. Uh, we've learned to execute. Yes, we have to get better at execution, but we've learned a lot going from when I joined RIM in 2007. So um, never lose this innovation spirit, but also make sure that once we say a product is defined, that we move decisively into execution mode and get the product done in good quality on time and also at good cost. More internally from a process perspective, I think we need to get a bit more discipline in our own processes. Um, you know, we are a great innovative company, but sometimes we innovate too much when while we are building a product. So I want to spend more time on, on prototyping, on exploring, on research and development while we are building product on a separate stream. We have a strong customer base today, both in corporate, enterprise, and in consumers. Um, this is important to us. You know, our enterprise customers mean a lot to us, and we want to continue that. That's a very strong fortress that we own. We want to keep owning this and innovating in that fortress. However, our growth in the past has also come a lot now from consumer. Um, and I think what we need to get a bit better at here is to um, have a... Okay. Now, 
I want to talk about that clip a little bit uh, uh, from, from the new CEO, which was appointed in January. Number one, what I really enjoy about uh, Thornson is his enthusiasm, his passion. It is obvious in his eyes that he has passion for the product in his company. Now, majority of the analysts on the, on the street, they're not given much hope that he can reverse uh, the downward spiral. And like I said, if we go back to the slide, Dave, uh, if, we, if we look at uh, where uh, Realm is today, and, and, and they are number eight, okay? Uh, they're, they're number eight, pushing number nine category there. So once again, doubts, problems, threats, right? So the challenge that the CEO and executive team and all employees has is to redo a reversal. And like I said, it's very challenging to uh, solve problems that was created by the same people. Now, for you that follow the market closely, you know that there's been uh, some executives that has left realm of recent. Uh, so, I mean, I, I appreciate his energy and his passion, uh, but uh, he's, he's got some challenges there. Now, the issue is this. Why is it we had a, a company uh, that was pretty much one of the leaders in uh, the commonly referred as the BlackBerry, especially in the commercial market? Why is it they lost uh, their way? Well, I can tell you why, and I don't mind calling it. It was, in fact, uh, their uh, uh, co-CEOs and founders uh, just kind of got them in trouble. And that was from an ego standpoint. And I know I get a lot of e emails on this. But from an opportunity standpoint, wouldn't it be absolutely wonderful if uh, REM could reverse uh, the direction? Wouldn't it be wonderful if that could be reversed? I think it would be a wonderful case study. And uh, can it be done? I, I'm, I'm not sure. But I know this. I know at the current uh, rate where you continue to have uh, uh, people saying you cannot, uh, and he was also talking about new customers coming from the consumer area. I don't know about that. Uh, but his business sector is an, is an opportunity that he has. But if you don't start instilling some confidence and some trust uh, into consumer, everybody's going to take an exit. So. Why is this important? It's important because um, it, 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 all these companies uh, has a place in the uh, arena to be able to create value, to be able to create jobs. And we want other, uh, other companies and, and have more competition in a free enterprise system versus having one or two or three major players all the time. And, and I think that's what keeps it healthy, and that's what keeps, uh, 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 keeps us uh, innovating, if you will. Now, uh, go back to the slide uh, uh, one more time, please, Dave. I also want to talk about number nine in the bureaucracy. Well, I, I, I kind of put the United States uh, government and some of the uh, government agencies in that category. Uh, I was reading a piece this morning about the GSA that had an event in uh, Las Vegas and spent about $800,000 on this event uh, for whatever reasons. And, 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 and there's been some very embarrassing uh, 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 snippets and uh, uh, clips that were made from GSA employees saying that they were only doing things to help uh, President Obama uh, to show his uh, uh, leadership, if you will. And this goes on and on and on. I can sure, sure that you can go research that and uh, see what I'm talking about there. But we have uh, some real challenges uh, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in the government agencies right now, right? We, we, have, we have some real challenges there. Now, what I want to do is talk about the last uh, last piece, and it's death, okay? 
closure, sell-off, bankruptcy, uh, bought for the assets. Well, 2008, and if we could just come back to the camera today. 2008, uh, we know that the U.S., uh, through the bailout funds, uh, we shored up. Of, of a lot of businesses, AIG and the automobile industry and the financial sectors where we said they're too big to fail, right? So we shored all of that up. Uh, but they were at number 10 at desk door. And we have a lot of other organizations at desk door today. Now, what I also find very interesting, um, if you look at the automobile industry, we have a, had a huge uh, uh, resurgence uh, from Chrysler. Uh, Chrysler's uh, sales was up 44 uh, percent in, in, in March. Uh, GM, Ford, and, and largely in part because the average American are driving 10-year-old cars today, which is a huge uh, consumer of what? Petro, fuel, sucking, <laughs> sucking fuel. So we, we've had a, 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 a great uh, increase in automobile sales in, in, in March so far because people are making the decision, I can buy now because I've got more, uh, I, I got better gas mileage, I can save at the pumps, and I can do all these things. So as you can tell, we, we have a whole bunch of stuff that's going on, but at the end of the day is to realize when you're looking, uh, as, as you leaders are looking at your organizations, as you're looking to start new organizations, be aware that there is uh, these life cycles here. And what you want to be able to demonstrate if, uh, to uh, the market, if you will, or to the shareholder, because unless you're independently wealthy, you're having to get money some way. You're having to sell equity some way. And this is a, a, a great tool to have in your arsenal and be aware of. And especially based on the new crowd, uh, crowdfunding and the new Jobs Act with an opportunity to sell equities to the, via the internet. Now, it's not saying that you can come out here and sell junk. It's saying that you need to be aware and take responsibility uh, based on these life cycles and, 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 and you are staying at that prime and that stability aspect, okay? Now, I hope that uh, today, um, well, let me do this before I get into it. Looking at, and this is, uh, was produced by uh, my friend Ted Lewis, and this is probably a good opportunity to uh, kind of tell you what we're doing. We have a, a summit that we're working on. It's going to be in September, actually September the 25th and 26th at the beautiful Hayes Mansion in San Jose. It's going to be a two-day summit and for CEOs, CEOs and business owners, preferably between the 50 million to 500, and I use that word because that's the area that we really want to focus on right now. If you're at 50 million in revenue and you're looking to go to 100 million, how do you get there? Well, we are bringing together, and Jail White International is the organizer and is hosting this event. We're bringing together some of the top talent in, in, in the way, such as uh, Dr. Ted Lewis on his complexity theory, and we're going to teach the uh, participants how to use these theories and apply it to business, and we're going to be tying everything together to this um, um, uh, 10 cycles, right? So we're going to continue to talk about that in shows upcoming. And uh, we're, we're just going to continue to drill down on the tools that we need. Uh, and we believe that we can continue to bring you uh, to help uh, uh, break your life uh, and your business a little bit better. So next, next week, uh, we'll be back at the same time. And uh, I hope you've got some nuggets that you can use on today's show. You're watching KYMB Comcast Channel 19, and I'll see you next Monday. This has been Jim White's Circle of Success Show. Please visit our website, jlwcos.tv. Join us next time as Jim White brings it all together on Jim White's Circle of Success.